The color scheme of your website is a component that will really make or break your design. Now a good color scheme probably won't really be noticed by many people, but it will make your website pleasing to the eye and very easy to use. On the contrary, a bad color scheme will be instantly noticed and will really push people away from your website. It will really push them away from your client's brand and prevent them from moving you through your website in a, in a easily usable way. So let's cover some ground rules to make sure that your color scheme does not prevent a, video, a visitor from effectively using your page. Obviously this site is not a good example of a color scheme. There's so much going on here with different colors of text, different backgrounds. You don't know where to look and it's very hard on the eyes. There's no direction on what the main content is and it's just when you land on this page, you don't have a good way to really just process the information right off the bat. A lot of web designers make this mistake and go hog wild with their new websites and create artistic sites like this that they had fun making, but that are almost completely unusable because the text is hard to read, elements blur together, or because the color scheme just puts emphasis in the wrong areas. So real quick, let's look at some other bad examples of web design color schemes to help you guard against those mistakes so that you can really make websites that are going to promote your client's brand and allow your users to move through the site efficiently and without any frustration. So in this one, we have the use of a background image. A lot of web designers will also use background textures, although that's not quite as common these days. One thing that you notice here is that over in this section, the color of the background image does not contrast well with this black text. Same here. It's hard to read this. It does not contrast well against the dark background with the blue text. Another issue is that there is no continuity in the color scheme, even between the images and the text on the page. Additionally, referring to just visual hierarchy, you don't know where to look. Even the colors do not contribute to that. You have red over here, and apparently that's a link. I didn't even know that. Uh, but this page is just very hard to process because the information is not brought out in a way that you can clearly understand. Next, this one really shows the problems of images, or not images, but different elements blurring together. Right here in this navigation section, you have this kind of a dark blue against a dark green. And although you can see the navigational elements, it's very hard to pick them out against the, against the green background. Also right here, you have yellow text against black background. And although it is very has a lot of contrast to it, it's very hard on the eyes. Reading an entire paragraph of this would really wear your eyes out and would make it hard to process the information very well on the page. Also, with so little content on the page, all of these very bright, vibrant colors really distract from the design. All of the contrast does make it very obvious what sections are what, but it's very hard to process the information on the page because these elements are distracting from this content right here. So now that we've kind of established some of the no-nos of color schemes, let's look at some good examples of web design that you can use to kind of influence your own color schemes, and then we'll look at tools that you can use to put together your own color schemes. This first one is a web design agency in London. A good general rule for web design is you want body text and headings to be either black or a very dark gray, like this right here. The second rule is that you want your background to be usually a neutral color, like a white or a very light gray, like they have in this instance. What this, this allows users to see the text. It stands out very well from the background. There's a lot of contrast, but it's not such a sharp contrast that it's hard on your eyes, like this yellow is against the black background. Now, in the use of background images and vectors and things like that, you want to make sure that the images are not really uh, distracting from the rest of your content and that your text is usable, or that it's readable. In this case, you have white text on this background, and white text use works really well against highly contrasted backgrounds like this, where you have white and light and dark colors going on at the same time. Now, in this next slide, they have a very light background, and you can still use black text there if that background image allows it. Now, if you have a light background and you also want to use white text to keep things consistent, you can also use a semi-transparent black background on the text itself to really separate it from the background image and still make that readable. Now, these rules primarily deal with the text being legible and not being too hard on the eyes due to contrast. The black background and yellow text, like in this example, has a lot of contrast, like we said before, but it's very hard on the eyes and it's very, look, very hard to look at for very long. So now let's look at some ways you can actually come up with your own color scheme. And this first tool is called Pictaculous.com. What Pictaculous allows you to do is you browse your computer for a file, in this case, a image, per, uh, perhaps the client's logo would be good to start with, or maybe a background image that you're using. This is the background image that I chose to use. 
And what it will do is it will analyze the image and pick out the main colors that are used in that image and return it to you in a palette. Obviously, I wouldn't necessarily use all of these colors, but I might pick out one or two just to make sure that I could match their logo in one or two ways throughout the website to keep their branding consistent. Now, P Pictaculous won't work for every color scheme. It won't work for every single project, but it's a good place to start if the company has an established brand, especially if they already have a website up and they have a logo with colors and things like that that you feel like would still carry over well to a new design. The next tool that we're going to use is called colorlovers.com. Color Lovers is almost like social media for people who like putting together color palettes. And there are a lot of palettes on here to choose from. Not all of them are good. See, some of these are not really easy to look at. Some of them are textures that are I would not recommend using on a website. But they do have different categories, and these, this can be a really good idea, a good way to get ideas and get, get your creativity flowing for creating a color scheme. Some of these you may be able to use right off the bat. Others you may just have to adapt and use yourself. Uh, one thing that I really do like about color lovers is that they will give you the hex values for each of these colors. Uh, the next tool that we want to use is flat UI colors. See, flat UI colors uh, provides easy access to colors that fit in the flat design style of web design. Flat style colors are very bright and vibrant like you can see right here. Uh, and they're great for use with almost any style of web design, especially minimal web design. Especially where you have a, uh, a white or a very light background and you want these colors to stand out. For to use flat the flat color, UI colors .com, you just click on the color you want. It'll copy the hex value or the RGBA or the RGB value, depending on what you have sele selected. It'll copy that to your clipboard, and you can paste it into your code or into your color picker. The next tool is materialui.com. This is very similar to flat UI colors, except it adheres to the material design color scheme uh, instead of flat design. Material design is a design spec created by the people at Google and is based on a combination of flat design and skeuomorphic design styles. Skeuomorphic design is the type of design that tries to emulate the actual look and feel of real world uh, elements, like a button. Uh, it almost makes a site look 3D. If you remember several years ago, maybe PayPal buttons, they looked all rounded. They almost looked like they popped off the page a little bit. That's skeuomorphic design. Material design is an extremely clean and flexible design style, and the colors are even more flexible than flat design colors. Almost any material design color will pair fine with any other material design color. Material UI makes it really easy to adapt material style colors to your own needs, since they give you different shades of each material style color. All you have to do is select the color that you want, and they'll give you different shades of that color. And again, most any of these will pair well with any other of these. I would typically remember matching the. I would typically recommend uh, matching the, the numbers over here to get, make sure you're in the same general range for the shade. Again, you just click on this, and it'll copy the hexadecimal value to your clipboard. Now, when you're creating your color schemes, your focus should typically be on making the site visually interesting, but also easily usable. Typically, less is more. A good general rule that I use for web design is that I pick two to three neutral colors that I use for the background, text, and maybe small accents. Usually it'll be a white or very light gray background, black or a very dark gray for the text, and maybe a white or gray for just small accents like a horizontal rule, a small line, a divider that I would want to use to separate elements visually. Next, you want to select a primary feature color that's going to be used to bring attention to buttons. And it's going to be a, really, a color that really pops off the page like a red, or if you have a white background, it could be a blue. Honestly, any of these will work if you have a white background. Next, you want to select a secondary color that makes things stand out a bit less noticeably than the primary color, but it still contrasts well with the background. So it might be maybe a less bright version of the color that you selected. So if my primary color is this right here, I might select this as my secondary color and use that to highlight links and things like that. Now, now that you have these tools, you should be able to combine different colors. I would recommend going through and just putting together different color schemes and experimenting with colors, see what looks good, and definitely look through different websites that you use regularly and try to pick apart their color scheme, try to figure out what the logic is behind the colors that they're using, and then you can use that logic in your own websites in the future.